بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters This is your brother Abdurrahman Babibur Alhamdulillah today we had a great khutbah by Sheikh Saeed Purcell about the strength and the weight of the words that we speak and specifically he pointed out on the severity of the um, us speaking about Allah with that knowledge and it's mentioned in different surahs he commented very subhanallah and expanded on the verse that is um, mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf and subhanallah in Islam the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a lot of the time with his companions have reminded them the weight that words hold in Islam and the fact that we as Muslims always have two angels and Allah above them watching us all the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching all the words that we say and he's going to account us about them in the day of judgment and inshallah we are going to ask our Shaykh about the strength and the, the weight that words uh, hold in Islam. But before that, we would like to welcome him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shaykh Sayyid, how are you? Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I'm always happy to be here. Alhamdulillah, we're very happy to see you for the second time here uh, in our masjid. And inshallah, we hope that we see you more often, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Um, Subhanallah, Jazakallah khair first of all about this yani, uh, khutbah and we would like to really make a comment uh, or a commentary about this important topic of today which is the strength of force and that Subhanallah al-Azim where you know one of the hadith that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned after mentioning all the a lot of the good deeds that have been recommended for us in Islam in the hadith of Ma'ad al Jabal, he told him, Shall I tell you about what governs all of this, all of these good deeds? He told them, Kuffa alayka hadha. Make sure that you govern and restrict the words of your tongue. So, inshallah, if you can make a comment about that. Inshallah. Um, it is uh, a very serious topic, and uh, actually, as you were saying what you were saying, I was thinking of, I believe it's a statement from Ibn Abbas, or Abdi Allah, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, where he said that nothing has a greater right to be in prison than this, and he pointed to his tongue, referring to keeping his teeth closed like prison bars to keep his tongue uh, restrained from speaking. And he, it's important, I think, even to look at this, this statement and who's saying it. Yeah, these are the th these are the subtleties sometimes of things that we that we that we miss. This isn't just anybody saying that this has a greater right to be imprisoned than you know than anything else. This is Ibn Abbas, who is the one who was prayed for by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him, to have fit, to have insight, to have the ability to explain the Quran. In, in great detail, and yet he himself is saying how much of a right his tongue has to be restrained and to be imprisoned behind his teeth in terms of restraining his speech. So somebody which has this attribute is this cautious about how they use their speech, how they use their tongue, how much more so for the rest of us, for the you know, the, um, the common people, that we should restrain our tongues and we should control them and we, we have to realize that they can be used as forces for good evil. It's like any object, as you as you know, inshallah. The deen doesn't give rulings to objects. I can't say this chair is haram or halal for that matter. <laughs> this chair is a chair. Now what I do with this chair changes the ruling. In the same way television, which is a classic one, what is the ruling? Yeah, shit. What is the ruling on TV? Your TV set has no ruling. What you do with your TV set, that has the ruling. Mm -hmm. So your tongue and your speech by itself does not have the ruling. But what you do with that 
is what has the ruling. You can use it for good, such as the hadith that we know where it says that when you see an evil, you should stop it with your hand. And if you can't, then with your tongue. So speech here being used for good. Or then if you can't, with your heart. Similarly, as you said, as the Prophet is alluding there, he talks about hasa'ad al lisan the harvest of the tongue, and how dangerous this, this farm field is that we sow with the seeds of our speech from our tongues. Are we planting seeds of good crops, or are we planting diseased crops? That is all dependent upon not just our speech itself, the content of our speech, but even the intention behind our speech. These are the things, these are sometimes we only think about the, the, the obvious manifestations of our actions. But speech is an action that is questioned. Our intentions, our hearts, what goes on in our hearts, many times people don't, don't really give this due consideration, are actions. And they will be judged, what we are doing in, with our hearts in terms of our love and our fear and our hope and our trust. And, all of these things, these are all actions of the heart which have rulings, which have value, positive or negative, depending on what they are. So the enormity of these things, seemingly subtle things, are so great. I think about it in the Quran, it has mm -hmm. a heavy word, a heavy speech. <clears throat> so we know that some speech, like the Quran, which is speech, yes. but it's not just anybody's speech. Allah. It is kaulin thaqila, a heavy, heavy word. It's not like other words. So words have value. And subhanAllah, if you notice this kaulin thaqila, heavy words, we also have, subhanAllah, a very great opportunity in our life to use this tongue to be a source and a, a path to Jannah, subhanAllah. Yeah. We have a lot of opportunities to make a lot of good deeds through this tongue by reciting the Quran, by doing dhikr, by doing a lot of things. And also, it's also, on the other side, it's also, you know, we can, it could be the only reason for the person to go to Nahr. Yeah. The only reason. You know, we know the great sin, for example, that we can, um, that we can um, make by our tongue, which is backbiting. And this sin, um, usually it's not like any other sin in terms of repentance. Right. We have to go through a different um, way of repenting by trying to get to the person and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you for the sins that subhanAllah you might make. Um, uh, for example, you know, you miss, uh, you delay a prayer or something. If you repent, Allah, will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you for that. But if you do sin against somebody, yes. Allah will forgive you when you go and ask that person for forgiveness. SubhanAllah So we see this um, yani, uh, weight of words which a lot of the other actions doesn't have. SubhanAllah. So um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really to make us see this um, uh, importance of words. And um, if you can, inshallah, go ahead. As you were speaking, I was just thinking again of another of uh, the statements of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My mind swims with uh, a hadith more than anything else. Mm. And there's one, the gist of what he's saying is that a person may say a word that they, that they consider very lightly. Mm. And because of it, they'll be plunged into the hellfire at a distance of like 70 years, but a, a very great distance. Because of a, sm a simple word that they didn't think very much about. And that simple word plunges them into the hellfire. Mm. You know, this is an example of exactly what you're talking about, the gravity of the things that we say and things that we don't even realize sometimes. We, and it's, you know, we have to understand when we say that it's not that you're ignorant of something. If you're ignorant of something genuinely, then you're forgiven. But if you're willfully ignorant, you, know, you, you had the opportunity, you had the opportunity to appreciate the gravity and you deliberately try to avoid thinking about it or, or reflecting upon it, mm. you are guilty then. You know, and you are exposed to that mm -hmm. because you, <clears throat> you neglected to ascertain, as we had talked about in the khutbah, mm. whatever it is that we go into, we are required to have knowledge about the thing that we're going into mm. as to what are the boundaries, what are the rules, what are the guidelines, the signposts for us on how to carry that out. 
So when it comes to speech, as, as mundane and as fundamental as it might seem, we need to understand the etiquettes and the, and the boundaries for our speech. Uh, one of the things that I repeat many times is uh, something that is attributed to Imam Shafi, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, may Allah shower him with mercy, where he mentioned the importance of speaking, uh, of evaluating your speech before you speak. Mm. And to say that you should think carefully about what you're about to say as to whether there's benefit or harm. And if you see there is benefit, then go ahead and speak. If you see that there's harm, refrain. If you're not clear, then think again. Reflect on it again. And if you still can't see any sure benefit, <clears throat> You need, so you don't see you don't see a harm, but you don't see a benefit either. If it some still seems neutral to you, then he said it's better off that you leave it alone. Mm. And then you don't speak. You only open your mouth to speak when you are certain that there's a benefit in your speaking. Mm. SubhanAllah, Jazakallah khair very much for this uh, great commentary. And um, SubhanAllah, and just as just the last point that Sheikh Said was um, commenting on is that subhanallah also any word that we say they say is like an arrow if it goes out khalas, you have no other way to get it back yeah, yeah. you're gonna be accounted for it and this is it's, it's, it could be like different from a lot of the other things that we can do because we could you know change our minds to stop doing it and so on but if this word goes out khalas, it's like an arrow that you can't get out from the air, subhanAllah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who really um, guard their tongue and see the, the gravity of the words that we say. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.